हेलो मैम हेलो जी चिराज ओके गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन एम आई ऑडिबल यस मैम यू आर ऑडिबल या फाइन सो शैल वी स्टार्ट यस मैम we will revise for a 5 to 10 minutes for the earlier session then we will start with the actual commands in a docker i hope my screen is visible okay so this is the docker content uh, so these are the main concept in a docker like a image registry container compose swarm client server architecture and then components of a docker here we can see the architecture of a docker and docker workflow these are the important concept in a docker and then we have seen why docker is important so mainly docker will be used to build test and deploy your application quickly okay so uh, docker has one standardized unit which is called as a container and uh, whenever we are creating any image for our application that image when we execute a container will be created so we can say container is a running process we can say container is a running process okay now what this image holds so this image holds uh, whatever required to execute that application or uh, whatever dependency libraries plugins tools os also in some scenario and runtime environment like a jr jre java runtime environment python runtime environment so whatever uh, programming program execution environment required so all these things will be bundled together with the help of a image and then when we execute that image it will form a container okay so uh, here we have a, a proper definition of a docker you can refer this okay so it is also a software see I try to understand the difference between web server software standalone application okay so this is a software platform and what this docker software will do it will allow us to build the test and deploy our application quickly okay so these are the main three tasks we are going to do with the help of a docker build a build is nothing but executing application and then creating archive folder for that application then testing application and deploy that application on the server these are the three main tasks we can able to do with the help of this docker application docker software okay uh, so next uh, we have seen uh, some detail overview of a docker where we have seen uh, what is a docker and what is the purpose of a docker mm -hmm. uh, then what are the elements included in a container here i am calling it as a container instead of container you can call it as a image also both are uh, both are different image and container okay image will be a static file we can say and whenever we are executing that file it will become a container okay so image will will hold all the things such as system tools libraries runtime dependency everything will be included in the image and when we execute that image it will become a container okay so container is a lightweight package and it provides isolation okay we can say it provides lightweight isolation okay so to understand lightweight isolation what we need to do uh, we need to understand what is a virtual machine and what is a container okay so as i have mentioned here container and virtual machine both are totally different okay um, in what way they are different if you see the below diagram it is mentioned here virtual machine will be created Uh, from your physical servers and to create virtual machine we require one third party software that third party software is called as a hypervisor okay if you see this diagram here uh, this below infrastructure is nothing but hardware and software resources of your system and uh, with the help of a third party software which is called as hypervisor we have created three virtual machines a b and c we can see here okay so each virtual machine has its own guest os 
that means this virtual machines will mimic your actual system okay it will it doesn't have any hardware support but it will mimic like your actual operating system okay and how it is created with the help of hypervisor okay so each operating uh, each uh, virtual machine will be act as a guest operating system and it will be totally independent from other operating system as well as the physical server okay this operating system is totally different that means if you install one of the software in this uh, guest operating system this virtual machine then it will not affect or it will not reflect on the remaining virtual machines as well as the physical physical system okay means if you, if you install one of the application or one of the software in virtual machine it will be available only on that virtual machine it will not install on the actual physical system okay this is about the virtual machine now next we have seen the concept of a container okay so here if you see uh, with the help of a docker software we can create multiple containers okay now container will also work as an isolated environment it provide isolated environment but it shares the same OS of your host operating system. Okay, a container doesn't require a separate OS. What it will do, it will share the same OS of your uh, physical system or we can say for, from your operating system. Okay, but uh, it can have a separate binaries or libraries. Okay, this container will have a separate binaries and library. And the kernel will also share from the physical system. Okay, kernel and OS will be shared from your physical system and each container will be a separate isolated environment. Okay, each container will be a separate isolated environment. Okay, so this is all about the container and uh, virtual machine. Now, the, what is mean by containerization and virtualization? The process of creating a container is called as a containerization, whereas the process of creating virtual machine will be called as a virtualization. Okay, this is the main difference. Uh, in interview, they, they can ask you, so just be alert. Okay, so this is uh, the some difference between containers and virtual machines I have mentioned here. As we can see, containers and abstraction at the application level, whereas virtual machines are, uh, are an abstraction at the physical hardware or even uh, server system. Okay. So multiple container can run on the same system whereas hypervisor allow multiple virtual machine on a single machine. <coughs> Sorry. Then container size is very less. Container requires very less space. Uh, whereas in MB, whereas virtual machines are require space in a GBs. Okay. So booting of a virtual machine is a difficult or it is a slow. Whereas booting of container is the faster. Okay, these are the few differences between container and virtual machine. Then Docker daemon. Docker daemon is the process. Uh, uh, this process will get installed whenever we are installing the Docker software. Okay, so where this Docker daemon will run, it will run on your host applications. And what is the main task of a Docker daemon? To manage the Docker services. Okay, what is the main task of Docker daemon? To manage the Docker services and docker containers and it will run on the host operating system where you are actually docker is installed okay uh, next we have seen the architecture of your docker so there are three main components of the architecture client docker host and the docker registry now whenever you are installing docker software by default client and the host will be installed on a single system okay this client and this host both will be installed on a single system in initial days. But ma'am, will... hello ma'am. Yeah. Please. Sorry. Am I audible? Ah yes, ma'am. You are audible. No issues at all. Okay. Whenever we are installing Docker. We can say client and the host will be installed on a single system. So how you can access this Docker client? So from your terminal, whatever terminal you are using, it can, it can be a command line, it can be a PowerPoint, it can be your Ubuntu terminal. Whatever terminal you are using with the same terminal, you can access or you can work as a Docker client. Whereas Docker host will contain Docker daemon. So Docker daemon is the process which is installed on the Docker host. Now what this Docker daemon will do, it will manage the containers. 
okay it will create the container how it will create the container so whenever we are running this image from that image a container will get created so if you see carefully this is the ubuntu symbol okay this is the ubuntu symbol if you see carefully that means this is the ubuntu image so we will fetch this image from where we will fetch this image from the docker hub registry okay this is a repository where all the predefined images are available so that images can be for nginx image can be ubuntu image can be a tomcat server and few a uh, few applications also okay they already have created image for few applications and they have deployed or they have uploaded that images here in the registry so you can call it as a this is a storage or this is a repository where all predefined images are available now the question arises that can we upload our image to this registry yes that is also possible okay we can upload our image into this registry so that other people can refer from the registry for example i can create image of an application and i will upload here in the docker hub registry then maybe girish or susmita anyone can able to directly pull that application and they can able to run that application on your system so it made deployment very easy okay for example a developer will upload image for your application and in the production environment simply we will pull that image and we can execute that image on the production environment so it made deployment sharing as well as building of your application very easy okay so uh, this is an architecture uh, so if someone asks you should know the de details for the question so next here you can see so uh, what is the main difference between image and a container okay so this is an image which contains some uh, files included in this okay so whenever we are executing this image we are making the process of this image simply we can call this as a program and when we are executing this program it will become like a container okay so from single image we can run multiple container at a time okay from single image so maybe uh, this image is an tomcat image okay remember this image is an tomcat image on which port tomcat server run so the default port for tomcat server is 8080 am i right so if i create uh, if i execute the image this container will run on 8080 port okay again we can create second container from the same image but we have to change the port number okay we have to change the port number for that image how we can change port number i will explain you when we are executing the images okay so from single image at a time we can create multiple container and that container run on same system with a different port number okay in the same system that all container uh, will run in the same system with a different port number okay that also possible so this is about image and the container different yeah next docker flow okay so see this diagram carefully so how we can create the image that question arises again is it possible to create image and how we can create our own image so if you see carefully this is the docker file now docker file is a text file which contains some commands and instruction okay by using that commands and instruction we can create an image okay so build command will be used to create image from the docker file now what this docker file contains it will contain some instructions instruction like a from copy entry point cmd some instructions are there not more than i guess 12 or 13 instructions are only there that we have to use in this docker file total 12 or 30 instructions or commands are there so from this 12 and 30 instruction we can create an image okay after creating image what we have to do so you can see this image contain maybe operating system it may contain software it may contain application code these are the things clubbed into this image now whenever we are executing this image it will create a container it will create a container okay this is the flow of your docker simple flow okay we have to create image with the help of docker file after creating image we have to run that image and it will create a container okay so this is a simple flow next 
yeah these are the commands so let's not uh, go in a command uh, here we will see with the actual ec2 instance okay let me stop the sharing I hope my screen is visible. EC2 instance, Ubuntu window. Is yes, it visible? Yes, yes. So let's see. Yesterday I have shown you how we can install a Docker. Okay. So let me check whether Docker is installed or not. How we can check. So we have a command. So we have a command sudo docker hyphen hyphen version same command we will use the to, to check all installation for example if you want to check whether the java is installed or not we can say java hyphen hyphen version if you want to check marvin is installed or not we have to check mvn hyphen hyphen version okay so this same command we can use to check the version number okay or whether the software is installed or not we can check with the help of this uh, command okay docker hyphen hyphen version so if you see uh, docker version is 24 okay so that means docker is already installed here now uh, see so the main component of a docker are images and container okay so let me check any images are available on my system so the command which is used to check all images in your system is docker images okay here I'm using sudo privileges because my Ubuntu user doesn't have a sudo privileges and Docker is not added into the sudo group. Okay. See, my Docker is not added into the sudo group. That's the reason every time whenever I'm executing Docker commands, I have to use sudo. Okay. Um, for some security reasons, I have not added. So, um, okay, because there later when we are working with the Jenkins, uh, we need to add uh, Jenkins as a root user. That's the reason I am not doing any changes here. Okay. So let me start from here. So right now, before every command, I have to use sudo to give a root permission. Okay. Now let me check how many images are there in my system. So sudo, docker, and then images. Okay. This command will be used to check all images. Now if you see, here, all the headings are available, but content is not there. That means repository, tag, these are the headings, okay? Image ID created and size. But if you see, there are no images in my system, okay? So let me choose any images, okay, which is already available, okay? As I told you, where the all images will be available, predefined or uh, already uploaded images, where it will be available? Registry. <coughs> Right. So let me log into the Docker Hub registry. Yesterday I was some facing some issue, but uh, then I resolved that issue. Some authentication issue arises. Yeah. So this is my Docker Hub registry. Okay. So uh, login is very easy. You need to provide the your user uh, Gmail address only. With the help of Gmail, you can able to easily log into your Docker Hub registry. Okay. Whether the Docker Hub registry is available? Are you able to see my uh, Docker Hub registry? Ah, yes, ma'am. So fine. Now you, you can see here, uh, there are all images. Along with that, these are the few images which I have created and I have uploaded in my system. Okay. Why? Because how you are able to identify this is a my repository. Kalani Vitude is the my repository. And under my repository, I have uploaded few images, okay? For example, server, assign zero, dvt, banking, finance, insurance, me. These are the few images which I uploaded under my repository. But now, this is a, um, this is a public repository, but which is created under this user. Now I want to go for the public repository, okay? Uh, so I will check for particular image. So let's see. Uh, we will use some hello world image, okay? Hello world. 
how we have a first program at the hello world in python same like here we, here we have a hello world image okay now what this image will do so this image will print the output as a hello world okay this is a predefined image if you see now this rancher has uploaded hello world so this is the repository id you can say okay repository id so these many people have uploaded already hello world image i will go with the standard one So these are the hello world. All these many people have already uploaded hello world, hello world image. Okay. So let me go with the simple hello world. Okay. Okay. This is the one, Docker official image. Okay. Docker official image. So now this image is already available. Okay. It is pre uh, uploaded by someone else. Okay. So you can see here some information about this image is given, okay? So what are the tags available for this image? You can see. What are the tags available for this image, okay? Then Docker file, okay? To create image, we require Docker file. So some information about the Docker file is also provided here, you can see, okay? Uh, for any type of issue, we can go here. They have provided GitHub repository for all type of issues okay so next uh, when this image is uploaded you can see image upload uh, updated then publish the image okay and these are the few okay so when we run this image this will be the output hello from docker and some predefined lines okay this will be the output okay so what i will do you know i will pull this image okay now this image is available into the repository to get this image on my system, I have to pull this image, okay? So, if you see here, docker pull hello world, already instruction is given, okay? You can refer the same instruction to pull this image. So, I will copy from here. Just go to your instance, okay? And paste it here, okay? So, what it will do? It will pull this image from the repository. Now, we are using git pull and git push, same like uh, that. Here also, we can use uh, docker pull and docker push commands to access the repository content. So, the content I have copied earlier, let me paste it here. So, sudo docker pull. Now, this command will give error if I, if I doesn't use sudo. So, let me use first of all sudo privileges. You can see, they are pulling this image from the library and then pull completed. This is the image digester, that means hash code and, and the downloaded status we are say, going to see here. So this is the name of the image and this is the tag. So which image we have, uh, different versions will be available. Okay, uh, we, uh, version 1, version 2, version 3 like that. We have a here tag or version we are, as we can say, the latest. Okay, version we can see or this will be called as a tag. Okay, this will be called as a tag. So tag will give some information about version of that image. Okay, so this is the latest version of this hello world. So, if you see, now let's check whether the image is pulled from the repository or not. So, how we can check sudo docker and then images, okay. This command will help us to check the images, okay. So, you can see now one image is there. So, image name is hello world. The tag, is, tag of the image is latest image id, this one. Then uh, this uh, because this uh, instance is not synchronized, that's the reason it is, it is giving some different time slab. Okay, instant is not synchronized with the time. That's the reason it is giving some random size. So don't uh, consider it. You can ignore it. And then size of the images. Okay, size of the images. So these are the things uh, we have seen. Okay, thirteen point three KB is the size of this image. Now this is the image. Let's create a container from this image. So the simple way to create container is that sudo 
Docker to create container, we have to run the image. Okay, so that's why we are providing command sudo container sudo docker run and then name of the container. So name of the container I will write here hello world. Okay. So you can see. So I have executed this image. Okay. Run command will be used to execute this image. Okay. So you can see this is the output hello from docker and these are the command which are specified here. Okay. So now let me check whether the container is created or not. We have seen that we have pulled the image from the docker hub registry. Here it is showing. But I am telling that whenever we are executing this command, uh, this uh, image container will get created. What about the container? How can I check container? So to check the running container, we have a command sudo docker and ps. Okay. PS command will be used to check the running container. Write down somewhere so that you can refer. Okay, sudo docker PS. So PS command will be used to check running container. Okay. So why it is not showing here? Because the container created instruction in the container executed and the container exited also. Okay. Container exited also. That means whatever task we asked to this image uh, to print hello world that task are completed and immediately immediately the uh, control come out of this container okay so let me check stopped container okay this container is stopped now it printed the output and immediately it got stopped okay what here we uh, happened we have pulled the image and we have executed the image so whenever we have executed the image container created the work or task which we have assigned into that container is completed and immediately we are exi uh, exited from that container. So as I'm telling that container stopped, let me check the stopped container also. So how we can check. So we for that we have a command sudo docker ps and hyphen a. So hyphen a, a flag will allow us to check running container as well as the stopped container. Okay, running container as well as the stopped container. So if you see here, the container ID, then image name, from which image we have created this container. You can see the container ID. So from which image we have created this container from hello world. Okay, which command used to execute this image? Slash hello. Okay, because the uh, file name may be the uh, file name which contain actual code might be hello. So this command will be used to execute a script. Okay, we can say hello will be the script. Okay, so this is the command will be used to execute the script. Okay, so time two minute ago it is created and status is exited. Okay, the status is exited. That means this container got stopped. Okay, now let me create the container in a detached mode. Okay, detached mode that means in the background container will keep running. Okay container will keep running in the background. So same command I will use run command. But here I will add one more flag that is hyphen i. Hyphen i will be used to indicate interactive mode. Hyphen i will be used to indicate interactive mode. Okay. And then hyphen d to indicate detached mode. Okay. There are two types of a mode attached and the detached. So if you run the process of the image in an attached mode, uh, the process will be in the foreground. But if you specify hyphen D, that is in the detached mode, the process will run in the background. It will not stop. Okay. In the earlier scenario, whenever we are executing Hello World image, what it used to do? Uh, the container created, it executed the script. Uh, uh, slash hello script uh, and immediately container got exited. Why? Because the work or task assigned to that container is completed and container got stopped. But now what I will do, you know, I will run the container in the interactive mode with the detached mode. In the background, the container will be keep running. Okay. In the background, the container will be keep running. Okay. So for that detailed mode and to provide the uh, terminal permission, I will use hyphen T. Okay. Hyphen T is the pseudo terminal. Okay. Pseudo terminal for this container. Okay. 
So pseudo Docker run hyphen I hyphen hyphen T hyphen D and the image name. Okay. So let me enter. So you can see now the output seems different. You can see the container ID is generated. Okay. Container ID is generated. Now, as I'm told, uh, as I'm telling that this container will be running in the background. So let me check again with the ps command. So you can see. Okay, again it got executed. So let me take another image Ubuntu. Why? Because uh, this is just a simple program. That's the reason it is uh, it is coming out immediately. Let me take the Ubuntu image. Yeah. So yeah. So because this is a simple script, okay. This is a simple script which is executing. That's the reason it is immediately coming out of that script. So what we will do, you know, we will take Ubuntu image. So let me go here and search for the Ubuntu. So I will search for the Ubuntu image. Okay. So I came to this Docker of registry and I will search for Ubuntu image. Okay. So I will go with the official image. Yeah, this is an official Docker image. I will copy this image. I will go to my instance. Okay, here now I will pull this image. Okay. So sudo docker pull, uh, sudo docker pull Ubuntu. Sudo docker pull Ubuntu. Okay. So you can see it is now uh, extracting this Ubuntu image from the Docker Hub registry. Okay. So let me check now images. Whether the Docker, uh, sorry, whether the Ubuntu image pulled or not. So sudo Docker images. Now it will help us to identify how many images are there in my system. So you can see now we have two images. One is a Hello World, one is a Ubuntu. These are the two images we have in my system. Now let me run this Ubuntu uh, image in a interactive mode, okay, in the background mode. So I will run the same command, sudo docker run hyphen itd and then Ubuntu, okay. Sudo docker run hyphen itd and then Ubuntu. So what it will do now, it will execute this Ubuntu image in the background. Ubuntu image in the Ubuntu image in the background. So let me enter. You can see that container got created and this is the ID of the container. This is the ID of the container. It is then uh, we can say encrypted format. Okay. So let me check the container with the docker ps command. I hope it will be there now. You can see. Okay. So Ubuntu container is there now. See, this is the container ID. This container is created from the Ubuntu image. And you can see the container is up and running from 19 seconds. As I told you, I have executed this process to run in the background. Okay. Hyphen D is the uh, flag I have used to run the image in the detached mode. Am I right? So that's why here you can see it is not showing exited. What it is showing? It is a up. See carefully. It is a up. That means container is a running. And it is running from the last 19 seconds. Port is not specified. And some random name generated for this crazy gallows. Okay. This random name is generated. Okay. Let it be. We will not bother about this name. So this is the container ID. Okay image and the command okay so command which is executing is a bin bash that means terminal is executing here bin bash is the terminal of the ubuntu so right now this process or this command is executing with this bin bash terminal okay so what i will do you know i will try to stop this container now this container is up and running let me stop this container how we can stop so it is running in the background so that i can do some work here Okay, but right now in the background, this container is running. Am I right? So what I have to do, I have to stop this container. To stop the container, again, we have instruction sudo docker stop. And then we have to provide the container ID. Okay, 
either you can provide container id or else you can provide container name anything is okay both are unique okay either you can provide container id or else container name both are unique okay so let me go with the container id okay so let me copy and sudo docker stop and then provide the container id okay yeah so you can see the container is stopped how we can come to know whether the container is stopped or not again run the same command okay let me try with the same command sudo docker ps see here it is not showing container is running now how we can check the stopped container or stopped container and executing container so for that purpose we have to use one more flag that is hyphen a hyphen a indicate all stopped container as well as up container or we can say exited container as well as up container all the container we can check with the help of this command sudo docker ps hyphen a so if you see now three containers we created earlier and these three container exited also these are the names of this container the time when the container created and the command sir which is executed in that container these commands indicate uh, indicate uh, container commands okay these commands were executed into the container okay and the container created from this may uh, from these images and these are the container id now, if you see carefully, some random names are there. I don't want a random name to my container. I want to give some specific name uh, to this container, okay? So that I can able to identify. Why? Because now if you see, copying this copying this container ID and pasting, it quite become tedious, okay? Because of this long string. So if it is a name, we can easily remember about your containers. So let me see how we can provide name to this container, okay? So let's work with this. So I will create a container, Ubuntu container only. I will create. Okay. So how we can create container? I have to run the image. So sudo docker run. Okay. I will run in a background. Okay. Hyphen I for interactive mode, hyphen T for a terminal, and hyphen D for a detector. So now if you see carefully, instead of writing a hyphen D, hyphen T, hyphen uh, D separately, I have merged it together, okay? A single hyphen and then all three flags at a time. If you see, single hyphen and then all three flags at a time. We can write in this way also, okay? So, if I am writing, don't get confused. This is a hyphen I, hyphen T and hyphen D. All three flags we have specified here, okay? Now, what I have to provide is... These are the flags. Along with this flag, I have to provide the container ID. Okay. Sorry. Um, name. This is a, we are executing, we are running the image. So, we have to provide the image name. So, image name, I will use Ubuntu itself. Okay. So, image name will be Ubuntu. But what I am saying that I don't want this random name. I want to assign some unique name to my container. So, here I will use one more flag which is called as a hyphen hyphen name is equal to my container okay my container so if you see hyphen hyphen name is equal to hyphen hyphen my container and then ubuntu so now the container will get created that to be in the detached mode and name of the container will be my container and the container will be created from this ubuntu image let's execute it so this is the id let me check the status with the help of ps command okay to do docker ps okay hyphen a i will use now okay so if you see hyphen a what it means hyphen a means all it will show exited container as well as running container you can see here now so we have a 
here it is showing four containers among that three are exited that means these three container already stopped okay this three container already stopped and some random name generated for this container and one container only you can see this is the first container this is the new container which is recently created okay and the name of the container is a my container it is created it is up uh, the status is up it is created 16 seconds ago and uh, then command which is executed under this uh, container is the bean bash okay so can i open this ubuntu terminal see the container got created containers executing but can i actually open the terminal of this image sorry terminal of this container so that is also possible we can uh, use the terminal of this container okay we can open this container in the interactive mode okay with the help of a terminal so for that we have a command let me write here so the command is again sudo docker and then exec that means execute exec okay what we have to execute the container which container the up container so i can use the id of the container also name of the container so i will use here container name as a my container okay now i want to interact with this container okay the container which is up, I want to interact with this container. I want to use the terminal of this container. So what that purpose, what I will do, I will execute the container, but I have to provide here the flag, sir, which we are going to use here. That is hyphen IT, that is interactive terminal. And then I don't want in a detached mode. Why I'm not using D here? Because I want to work with that terminal, okay? I want to work with this container terminal. So I will not provide in a detached mode. Okay. I don't want to run in a background. I want in a foreground. Okay. Because I want to work with that. So here again, I have to provide the terminal name. Okay. So here I will provide the bash terminal. Okay. By default here, you can see in the command bash is provided. So I will use the bash terminal. Okay. So simply I will write here as a bash. So this is the terminal which will open for this container. Okay. So let me execute. You can see now. Are you able to see these things? Let me enlarge my screen. Yeah. So if you see. So if you see, this is my. This is my actual system. Okay. This is my instance Ubuntu and the IP address. This is my EC2 instance. And this is the container. This is the container. This is Ubuntu container, which is right now we are using. Okay. So this is the Ubuntu container. You can see root at the rate uh, and then some hash. This is the container ID. You can see carefully. 0 to C57. This is the same container ID. You can see here. Okay. So this is the root user of this container. This is the root user of this container. And above you can see this is Ubuntu user of this IP address. Okay. This is my EC2 instance. But now when we execute this command docker exec, exec that means this container will be open in an interactive mode and the terminal which we have provided to work with this uh, container is a bash. Okay, so this is a bash terminal. Now, let me check the file system in this container. Okay, right now I am working in this container. You can see we are in the root directory of this container. So let me check the file system. So I will do the ls. You can see this is an Ubuntu file structure. You will get the bean, boot, dev, etc, home, lib, all the file structure, same like your Ubuntu or Linux operating system. You can see. Now, can I create any folder here? So, let me try. MKDIR. Okay. MKDIR and folder name. So, I will write folder name as a <coughs> Dwiti. Okay. So, you can see Dwiti folder created here. So, enter. Now, if you do ls, the folder will be available. Now, can anyone tell me, uh, if I delete this container, or if I stop this container, what will happen to this folder?
see what I'm asking, you know, if you delete this container or if you stop this container, okay, if you remove this container from my system, if you remove the Ubuntu image from my system, what will happen to this folder? Will it be available on my system or if the same folder will get deleted along with this container? It will get deleted. Sure, correct. So the folder which I have created in the, into this container will be deleted along with the container. Why? Because I am I am telling that it is a providing isolated environment. Okay. So this is like a simple operating system which we have created with the help of container. Okay. So uh, we can say the durability of this folder will be available until the container is available. Okay. If the container got deleted, the folder will also get deleted. Okay. So now if I want to bring this folder or if I want persistent storage for this Dwiti folder, what I have to do? I have to create a volumes. Okay. Then three types of volume will be there. Named volume, bind volume and the anonymous volume. Okay. So we can create volume and we can map this Dwiti folder into your physical system or um, instead of physical system, I will call it as a EC2 instance. Okay. So I have to create a volume and then I have to map this folder to my EC2 instance. Okay. How to map and how to create volume we will see in the next session. But right now just I am trying to explain you the basic scenario. Now uh, will be there any IP address for this uh, container? Because every OS uh, and every system have some IP address. What about this Ubuntu? Uh, this is the container. Am I right? So what about IP address and network about this container? How we can get the information? So let me do one thing. Let me first of all exit from this container and let me check running container. The container is running from the seven minutes. So what I will do, you know, I will inspect this container. Okay, I will inspect the container. So to get all the details regarding IP address, regarding network, regarding file structure, Everything, all the details we can get about this container with the help of inspect command. So here we have a command sudo docker and inspect. Okay, inspect and then container name or ID you can provide. I will provide the name. Okay. So you can see this is the all information, background information about the container will be available. So let me go line by line. Actually, many factors are there, many parameters are there here. Yeah. So, you can see here the ID of the container. Okay, this is the ID of the container. Then, created time uh, of the container and then data. Then, path is the terminal. Okay. Then, arguments. Arguments, we have not passed any argument at the command line. So, it is empty. Then, state. What is the state? So, currently... The container is in a running state. Okay. Uh, then uh, these are some parameters which will be the default parameters like a process ID, then exit code, error code. Okay. So these are some state uh, state related information about like the uh, actual the process ID of that uh, uh, container. Okay. What processes are running. All this state related info information will be provided in the state module. Okay. Next we have a uh, the name, okay, name of the container, then driver we have used as the overlay to, then platform for this container is the Linux, as this container is based on the Linux platform, which is provided here, okay, then main things I want to show you that host configuration is a null, that means volume is not attached here, if you provide volume in the binds, you will get the volumes, okay, storage persistency volume will be available here. Okay, uh, then this is in JSON format, whatever we are getting output in the JSON format. Uh, then next, uh, network mode is the default. Uh, okay, port binding is not performed here. Port is empty, we can say. Uh, then uh, volume driver is not, because volume is not attached here, you can see now. DNS is not specified uh, because we are using IP only. Uh, then uh, many attributes are specified actually we should uh, 
we should not go in a detail regarding this attribute. Otherwise, it will create a lot of confusion. Just what important thing is that name, when created, state, and then, yeah, what I want to show, this one. IP address I want to show you. So you can see this image is created for the Ubuntu 22.04 version. Ubuntu version and the network configuration. You can see here now. These are the network settings. So the network default network used is the bridge. Okay. Whenever we are creating any container, it will use the bridge network. Okay. It will use the bridge network. Okay. So this is the default network. Like that, we have a four types of a network. We will see in the next session. Volume network. We will see in the next session. Just right now, try to understand about the basic things. Okay. So, default network which we have used is the bridge network. Port binding we have not done. This is the default location. Okay. This is the default location. Then, IP address you can see. IP address is 172.70.0.2. This is the IP address. And this is the gateway. This is the default gateway. And this is the IP address of this container. So now whenever you are adding number of container, the IP address will get changed. Okay, whatever container you are running on this system, so um, the IP address will be different for that. Something like a 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So the IP address will be changed. Why? Because this all container, whatever container, default container I'm creating on my system, all default the containers will be connected with each other through the bridge network. And they will use the same uh, gateway okay they will use the same gateway and the ip address for this container is the 172.70.0.2 okay so this is the private ip address we can say we cannot access this why because this is in my system okay this is the mac address for the container uh, network is the bridge network then few other details are specified but which is not much more important for us okay yeah so this is the basic information about the container. So this can be an interview question like how you will get uh, how you will get all configuration related information about the container. What is the command to get all configuration related uh, information about the container? So in that scenario, you can answer it like that. We have an inbuilt command which is called as the sudo docker and inspect and then container name or container ID you have to specify. Okay. So this is about the container basic information. Now next we will move how we can remove container, how we can remove images. Okay. So yeah. So these are the all containers available. So these are the exited containers. Can I remove this from my system? So to remove this container, what I have to do? Sudo docker. If you see carefully, in git, all commands start with the git word. Uh, in Maven, all commands start with the MVN. Whereas in Docker, all commands are starting with the Docker. Okay. Remember, this is the easy way to remember things. All commands are starting with the Docker. Okay. Docker word. So now, sudo docker rm. rm is the command which is used to remove the container. Now, next, you have to specify the container ID. So let me copy the ID and paste it here. So the uh, here the you can say uh, the encrypted uh, message will be encrypted. This uh, container ID will be displayed. That means container got deleted. How you can get the confirmation? sudo docker ps hyphen you can see only three containers are left earlier we had four now only three left let me delete again one more container this one so copy container id and paste okay Again, let's check whether it is deleted or not. You can see it's deleted only two left. Now, you, if you see carefully, this container is up. How can I stop this container? 
so we have a stop command am i right so sudo docker stop and i remember name of the container so i will not provide id for that okay so what is the name of container my container so this is the name of the container So if you want to remove the container from your system, first you have to stop the container and then you have to remove the container. Okay, first you have to stop the container and then you have to remove the container. Now, if I want to check all container ID only, okay, I don't want all the information. I just want to check all container ID only. So for that, we can use sudo docker ps along with a ps along with a we can use one more flag as a q hyphen q okay what this hyphen q will do it will give you only ids of the containers okay so it will give you only id it will not give other details like a name of the image then a time all the information will be hidden so it will give you only id why because for deletion purpose and then for a the start purpose we required id am I right so to get only ids we can use this command hyphen aq okay now let me remove how we can remove two containers at a time from a system so with this command we what we are getting we are getting all the ids only am i right so let me get take this id i will write the same command here okay and then now what I want to do, I want to remove all containers from my system at a time. Okay, I don't want to delete single, single. I want to remove all container at a time from my system. So what I will do, <clears throat> I will use the same command to get the IDs of all container. And then I will use command to remove the container. Okay, so sudo docker and then rm. Okay, rm command will remove the container, but which container? All the container. See, if you see carefully this command, what this command will do? It will give you all IDs of your container. Okay, so instead of specifying single ID here, what I have done, I have provided all the ID to delete all container from my system. Okay, what this command, see, I, I try to combine two, uh, two commands. Okay, what I have done here, I try to combine two commands. So this command will give us all IDs. Okay, this command sudo docker ps hyphen aq will give us all IDs. So <clears throat> all container ID I have used here. And then immediately I have removed all container ID with the help of rm command. So if you see, it will remove all the container. Okay. So the container ID is provided. That means container is removed. Now you can check with the ps command. You can see we don't have any running container and we don't have any exited container also. So all container removed from system running as well as a stopped container. Okay. Now how we can remove the images. So we can, we have removed the container. But if you see carefully, we have a number of images. Yeah, we have only two images here. How we can remove the images? So same rm command is there, but i will be attached. i indicate images, okay? So here, sudo docker rm remove. And what we want to remove? Images. That's the reason i, okay? Sudo docker rm to remove and i will be used to indicate images. Why? Because if you see carefully, to remove container, we have a same command. Sudo docker rm. If you use the same command, it will identify, it will consider it as a container. Okay. But we want to remove the images. That's the reason we have a command, same command, but with little modification. That is a RMI. Remove images. RMI. That is remove images. And then we have to provide the container ID. Sorry, image name or image ID. So which is easy to remember? Image name. So I will use Ubuntu. You can see the image is deleted. Now we can check again the same. 
images come up. Only one image is left. I will remove that image also. Okay. Sudo docker RMI and then hello world. So this image also removed. You can see deleted. The hash or the image will be deleted from your system. Let me verify once. Yeah, you can see it is deleted. Okay. So this is the way we can free uh, full image. We can uh, create container. We can delete container. We can stop container and we can remove the container. Okay. So these are the basic operation. Now, uh, the main important thing I want to tell you is that if you don't have a uh, Docker installed in your system. One official web, uh, one official uh, website is available where you can practice all Docker commands. So let me show you that one. So there you can practice all the Docker related commands. For you, no need to install Docker if you don't have Ubuntu or you don't want to spend the money for AWS. In that scenario, we have a one docker lab which is online available freely you can utilize that so let me show you that one also so where you can practice all basic docker commands okay let me open that Play with the Docker. The website name is a play with the Docker. If you don't want to install Docker and still you want to practice, you can check out this one, okay? So this is a play with the Docker. The website is labs, labs.play-with-docker.com, okay? I will share this URL in a chat box. You can check out. So if you don't want to install, then also no problem. You can play, you can practice here, Docker. Okay. Check your chat box, everyone. I have shared the link, but you can try to open that. So there you can practice all Docker related commands, okay? So you have to click on the login. It will ask you to log in with the Docker. Start, you can click on the start. You can see it will give you some four hours, okay? Uh, after four hours, you can again restart the instance, okay? So, my screen is visible, I guess? Yes. Yeah. So, if you see carefully, here four hours will be available. So, four hours this lab will be running. After four hours, you can again uh, restart the same thing, okay? So, here you can run the Docker. So, what you have to do? You have to add a new instance. You have to click on the add new instance, okay? So here you will get the uh, one instance, okay? So let me, let me uh, full screen we can see. Let me show you that. I will have to work around that. Yeah. So to, to display the con, uh, to display the only terminal, you can use Alt, Control, and Shift. Okay. 
So it will display you the terminal. Let me try once. Alt, Control, and Shift. You also try, guys. Alt, Alt, Enter, and Shift. Sorry, Alt, Enter, and Shift. Now, once you open this window, to get this terminal on a single page, Alt, Enter, and Shift. Yeah. So like this, you can get the whole terminal. I think so it is visible, okay? So what you have to do now, you can uh, you can execute all Docker commands here. So let me check the Docker version. This is provided by the Docker itself. The Docker version is 22, 24.0.2. This is online, guys. Okay, you can refer this. So let me pull the image. So Docker and we will use Ubuntu, okay? Even you can practice Ubuntu, instru in, uh, Ubuntu instructions also here, okay? If you don't have Ubuntu, yeah, if you don't have a Ubuntu OS and you want to uh, try Ubuntu instructions, commands, you can try here, okay? So now you can check. The image will be downloaded. Okay, Ubuntu. This is the image which is downloaded from the uh, which is downloaded from the repository okay now let's run this image so no need to use sudo here you can directly run the docker run hyphen itd and then name of the image so name of the image is ubuntu and then i have to provide some name to my container so i will use name flag okay my okay you can see the container got created so let's check the container is this easy guys i think so no need to install docker you can online practice all the things okay so let me uh, execute the docker in for the interactive mode so docker exec to execute the container hyphen it and then name of the container what is the name of the container my okay and then we have to specify the terminal so i will use bash terminal okay you can see the bash terminal is open now this is my container okay so you can do any work whatever you want you can create a file you can execute the con uh, commands, Ubuntu commands, okay? Touch high, do the ls, okay? Then do the ll. You can execute also git commands. So git, I don't know whether it will work or not. Git in it, git in it. Okay, git is not installed, okay? We need to install the git, okay? So uh, this is the terminal. How we can come out of this? How we can come out of this Ubuntu? So we have to type exit. Okay. So it will bring us to the actual user. Okay. So this is the IP address for the host system. Okay. So this is about the Docker lab. You can use this Docker lab. So let's try how we can create image, okay? So same command will be used to exit from these things. Okay. So enlarge the window, Alt, Enter and Shift. Alt, Enter, Shift and to again go back to the previous uh, state. Alt, Enter, Shift only. Same commands will be used, okay? So this will be running for the four hours. Later, you can again renew it. This is IP. As like that, you can create number of instances. This is creating. Yeah, you can see. Okay. 
So one more node created with the different IP address 192.168.0.27. Okay. So this is about the yeah. So this is about the Docker lab, online Docker lab. You can practice here if you don't want to install Docker on your system, okay? Or if you don't want to practice on the AWS. Because AWS, some 7, 20 hours uh, it is providing, okay? Later it will charge. So here you can practice all the commands, all the instruction Docker related. So let's try with the <clears throat> creating image, okay? So how we can create image? So these are the few images that we have used, but how we can create images, okay? That's the main important thing. Before that, let me show you some more images are there. For example, ng Nginx, Tomcat, okay? So let me go here and not only Ubuntu, some web server, some application server images are also available. So instead of, uh, in uh, instead of downloading the Tomcat and then installing Tomcat, do some configuration settings, what we can do simply, we can use the Tomcat image. If you if you have to install Nginx, uh, if you require Nginx for your application, then no need to use, uh, no need to download and install. What we can do, simply we can use the Nginx image. MySQL server, okay? So we can simply attach this MySQL server image into your application. So it is avoiding a uh, lot of burden of configura configuration and the management. So let me show the Nginx here. So see, this is the Nginx official doc, official images. Okay. These are the many versions available, you can see. These are the different, different versions. Latest 1.20 to 1 main line. Let me try one latest. So you can see this is the Docker file. Open code. Okay, this is the background code actually. Okay, this is the Docker file. So Docker file will be used to create image. This is the Docker file code for Nginx, okay? This code is used to create Nginx image. You can see. Okay. These are the few commands in Docker file, like copy, entry point, expose. Okay. So this Nginx image is used uh, uh, for Nginx image. We have used a port number 80. You can see. Okay. So this is Docker file. Okay, no problem. See what we will do, you know. We will see all these things in the tomorrow session, how we can create the Docker file. We will go with the basic one, then we will see advanced. Okay. So, do you have any doubt in this? In the Docker lab and the Docker commands? No, ma'am. Yeah. No better. Okay, fine. So we'll meet in tomorrow's session and we will discuss how we can create Docker image. Sorry, okay, Docker. Yeah, fine. Okay, so see you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. Yeah. Those who have a doubt regarding the previous session, uh, they can contact me on a Slack. Okay. So Dviti Raj. Uh, whether your doubt resolved regarding Marvin? Uh, no, ma'am. Whatever you are trying, I have to do the, in the same way. Tomorrow I will get back to you. Okay. So instead of in the class timing, what we will do in the morning session, if you are free, you can ping me on the Slack. We will have a meeting or else sir, what we will do, you know, Saturday, Sunday, we have a dedicated session for the doubt clarification. So I think so one more member is there uh, who is not understanding. Someone asked me yesterday, I guess. Yeah, yeah ma'am, Swati. Yeah, Swati. So, to my, uh, Saturday, this Saturday, we will have a doubt clarification session. That time, you can uh, join that session and you will uh, you will get uh, your doubts cleared, okay? 
Fine, everyone. So see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am.